going on, Falcon fan? This is Barbara Kondo coming back to you with another video. Some quick Atlanta Falcon news for today. But again, guys got their day off. If you have not already, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the notification bell so you know when I drop another video. Please hit the like button so I know you guys that hear what I talk about. Then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in here and talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So, according to Phil Yates today, the Atlanta Falcons actually restructured Deion Jones' contracts, freeing up about $8.5 million, giving him a $6.8 um, signing bonus. And what that was, what that was allowed them to do was actually free up some cap space for them. Now they're currently sitting at about nine and a half million dollars in cap space according to over the cap so that could mean a lot of things um for the atlanta falcons first obvious thing is now they have cap space so if they want to go out and actually sign somebody they could um interesting to see why they decide to do this because that that restructure actually added um three void years onto the contract so um if they was to do something with Deion Jones, like release him or trade him or something like that, of course, that would go towards their debt cap for the next couple of years, which is not that much of a big issue because it would, with the, the debt cap wouldn't be that much. However, it's just something to consider thinking that they did the void year. So the question is, why did they go ahead and actually do this restructure to this contract? Of course, we know they actually got this that cap space that they needed. They still might want to have look at um, some depth on the defensive line, perhaps. Maybe that could be somewhere they're looking to try to add. Of course, we know all offseason the issues they had with the defensive line. Um, they thought maybe they had the depth they needed, but looking at this move, we just have to wait and see um, if, if they're going to actually – do something with that cap space you would think because they did free up that cap space they might do something it'll be interesting interesting to see if they do something before this week is out against the, the um, los angeles round but we just have to see also another thing to consider about this restructure is now um, we talked about the possible trade of Dion jones earlier in the off season of course that never happened after the june one cut we actually thought that was going to take place but it didn't Deion Jones got healthy. He was back on the field for like one week. And then, of course, they put him on injury reserve. But if they would was to go back and look and be interested in the trading Deion Jones, um, the fact it would make it more appealing to other teams because now um, the other team will only have to pay about a little bit over a million dollars to this year to take um, Deion Jones' salary. So that could be very appealing for a team, especially – for all pro linebacker like Deion Jones. Of course, we don't know if the Falcons gonna do something like that. We just have to wait to see. I did th think it was very interesting to, to see that they actually put him on the um, injury reserve, which would have him out four games. But um, now you can kind of see the tea leaves, maybe. Uh, I don't know where this is going to lead. We just have to wait to see. The trade deadline is November the 1st. So they have until then if they decided to, to, you know, look at possible trades for Deion Jones and see if they can get some draft capital back for that. We'll just have to see. But this move, like I said, you can look at it in certainly different ways. You can look at it, um, like I said, freeing up that cap space to try to add to depth. Maybe other positions. We do know that Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot said that they love turning over the roster in and out. Some of those guys on the back end, they already know that they're not safe. So um, we definitely can see them adding maybe some some depth somewhere on this um, team. We just have to wait to see. Now, like I said, they have about nine and a half million dollars to play with for cap space we went over some of the free agents out there so we just have to see if they decide to actually add somebody maybe they had somebody in mind already that's why they made this move like i said we just have to wait to see stand by and see what they decide to do in other news they went ahead and actually brought anthony fersker on to the after roster Remember, they actually released Adul Anderson last week, so they only had 52 mans on the roster in, in 
anyway. So all they had to do was just spraying Anthony Fresco on. Remember, he was elevated from the practice squad last week. I mean, for this for the Anks game. So it was only 52 men on the roster. They elevated him from the practice squad. And they brought Adul Emerson back and put him on the practice squad. So now they're back to a 53-man roster. Um, and then in the corresponding move, taking Anthony Fresker off the um, the practice squad, they brought in Dylan Mabin, um, cornerback, that had some time with the Vikings and the Raiders, which primarily he's been on practice squad for both of those teams. So um, just another body they can add. Look at him. Take a look at it, maybe, to see what he can actually bring to the table. So now their practice squad is back full. Their fifth three man roster is back full. Um, we'll just have to see if, like I said, they decide to make any changes to this roster coming up this week or maybe next week. We'll just have to see, guys. That's all I have. Let me know what you think about the restructure of Deion Jones' contract. What you think that means moving forward. Maybe a possible trade, maybe adding some free agents, maybe to add some depth. In my opinion, I think if anywhere they're going to need to add it, they might want to add it to the defensive line. Um, just because if we're looking at that game, and I really don't want to talk about this game anymore, but if you're just looking at it, um, when Grady Jarrett and that first string defensive line was not out there, it seemed like that's when um, the ink started to make some momentum. And was not getting pressure like they was in those first three quarters. Maybe Grady got to suck it up and play the whole game if that's the case, but maybe they're trying to get more depth in those spots. We all know the, the injuries will happen with the defensive line all offseason, so they might not be satisfied there. We'll just have to see how it pans out here in the future. So, guys, that's all I have. Be looking out tomorrow for my keys to victory. Um, or this week's game against the Los Angeles Rams. And this is your boy Ricundo coming back at you with another video. Peace.